I mentioned at the top of the show that my tracksuit tonight is an homage to Squid Game and the Biden agenda. And now I'll tell you how and why. Two big stories dropped this week, underscoring the idea that America's economic inequality just isn't sustainable. First, the Pandora Papers, a vast trove of leaked documents revealing the obscene riches that the wealthy are stashing in secret, all to avoid paying the taxes that keep societies afloat. We're talking billionaires paying only thousands in taxes while buying million dollar homes for friends and mistresses. And then you get to why I'm wearing this tracksuit. Squid Game. This is the uniform in the show. The Korean Netflix drama about people trapped under insurmountable debt willing to compete in deadly versions of childhood games for the pot of money that you just saw on the screen here. Think Hunger Games mixed with who wants to be a millionaire, but everybody's got bad credit. Forget Bridgerton or Stranger Things, Squid Game is the most streamed show in America and the most watched show in the entire history of Netflix. That speaks volumes about the state of economic distress that most Americans are living through today. Since 1980, the share of wealth among the bottom half of income owners in America has plummeted, while the share going to the 1% has skyrocketed. And that was before the pandemic's billionaire boom. Tech titans like Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg winning big while the rest of us suffer. And we're reporting out today that while many Americans have now reversed pandemic wealth losses, minorities and those without high school diplomas have not. Squid Game also taps into systematic racism that places black and brown people and immigrants into a system that hard work will never get them out of. Soaring inequality around the world and at home. And Mitch McConnell is demonizing attempts to address this as socialism. Billionaires flying into space while Americans at home can't find affordable housing. But Joe Manchin worries about America becoming an entitlement society. This is the central fight of our time. Biden is pushing for a sweeping safety net program that, quite frankly, would be considered conservative amongst most other progressive parties around the world. With crutching education, health care and housing debt, would Americans be willing to sign up for their own squid game? We get into it with a progressive leader. Joining me now is Congressman Ro Khanna, Democrat from California. He's on the leadership team of the House Progressive, Con uh, House Progressive Caucus. Thank you so much, Congressman. I'm going to start with this. When we saw the Pandora Papers come out earlier this week, the idea that you've got multi-billionaires who are paying a smaller percentage of their taxes than somebody working at Carl's Jr., it, it offended me, it disgusted me, but it also struck me as the kind of thing of, like, we can't keep going like this. You will have bread riots and fights in the street. Do you think that your party, which is the closest thing we have to a progressive party in America, recognizes the urgency of addressing economic inequality. We do, and that is the president's agenda. When you have three people in this country having more wealth than the bottom 50 percent, something is wrong. And what the president is saying is tax my district, Silicon Valley. They made a tremendous amount of wealth. Tax it so that everyone can have a fair shot at the American dream. This is an entitlement. I mean, giving people education and health care so they can compete in a 21st century economy, it's not just fair, it's pro-growth, it's pro-opportunity. It's actually the smartest investment we can make in the 21st century economy. You know, the New York Times has done a piece on, as I mentioned, this sort of new hit viral show, The Squid Game. And the fact that most of the people in this show, they're in debt, not through irresponsibility. They just don't make enough money to simply live. And the idea that a show like this has connected so intimately with so many Americans shows the level of desperation that many of us feel. We're, we're way past the days of cribs and lifestyles of the rich and famous. Americans feel like they're willing to do anything to get out of debt. 
when we think about the two biggest debts that people are faced with, education debt and health care debt, how does the president's plan address either of those two issues going forward, assuming that it can get passed? Well, in education, it makes community college free. So if you're making 40,000, 50,000 bucks and you want to try to get a credential to better your life, to get a new opportunity, now you can do so and you don't have to go into debt to do it. And it also makes a preschool free so that if you have young kids, you don't have to pay an arm and a leg to give them a fair shot so they're not behind starting in kindergarten or first grade. And on medical, you know, it actually allows seniors to finally get, go to a dentist, to get a hearing aid. I mean, it's outrageous in this country that we don't have seniors covered to get a dental checkup, to get dental coverage, uh, or to get hearing aids. And I, I got to point out, Congressman, I think that's, that's really, really key. A lot of people think that, say, dental care is, like, oh, that's some extra, that's pretty stuff. Trust me, <laughs> dental problems turn into huge medical issues throughout the rest of your body if they're not properly addressed. You know, the, the, the other party, and I use that term generously because I think Republicans aren't really interested in governing right now, they have attacked any of these programs as socialism. I'm going to play you a clip of sort of their greatest hits on this and get your thoughts on the other side. Trojan horse for permanent socialism. And this is government-run socialism. Every one of us is opposed to it. Some, you know, human infrastructure package that's just socialism. Yeah. To leave Americans with a socialist country. I don't know what government-run socialism is. Is that like <laughs> barbecue-flavored barbecue chips? Um, you know, is it really socialism to create an economy that is fair and more accessible to regular people? Am I missing something here? Did, did my political science agree not, not count much? Jason, not at all. You know, I'd love to invite Senator McConnell, Senator Barrasso to my district, the heart of Silicon Valley. We produce $11 trillion of wealth. Let me tell you, no one is going to accuse Silicon Valley of being socialist. And you know what they will find when they look at Mark Zuckerberg's story or if they look at Microsoft Bill Gates' story, what they had? They had a great education. They had health care. They had those advantages starting out. And all we're saying is, why can't every American have that shot? They can succeed in a free market only if they have an education and the health to be able to compete in a market. So far from being socialism, this is about the best investment you can make in the American economy to have more people productive, especially if we want to compete with a billion people in China. And also, Congressman, I want to add, in addition to they had great education, they had health care, they also had infrastructure. You can't make hey. internet billions if you can't trust the Wi-Fi. Those of us who have the opportunity to travel abroad know how common it is to just have the internet shut down in certain parts of the world. That doesn't happen here. Uh, last, I want to make sure that we get to this. There is a member party, again, I use that term generously, <laughs> Joe Manchin in the Senate, who's consistently said that he's worried that the $3.5 trillion package may be uh, you know, creating an entitlement society, that there's, there's too much being given to people for free, that everything has to be means tested. Do you think the idea of giving people affordable health care and access to child care, is that going to make people entitled? Are people going to magically start having more babies because they think the government will take care of them? Absolutely not. And I think Senator Manchin can be reasoned with. At least he has a proposal out, unlike Senator Sinema. But the Ohio State, former president of Ohio, Ohio State, answered this for me. I, he's, I asked him, is there a disincentive to give people free college? And he said, you know, Ro, all of my kids had free college. I paid for it, and they did just fine. So the middle class and the affluent get a lot of things for free, and they do just fine. I think it's offensive to say that giving basic education and health care is somehow going to disincentivize the working class far from from it, it's going to raise their aspiration, their ambition, and make them even more productive. Thank you so much. Congressman Ro Khanna, thank you for putting this all in perspective for us tonight.